Well, uh, the Marcos administration at first, uh, a lot of promises to improve the healthcare system. Of course, uh, number one, uh, he promised to uh, hire more uh, health workers, most especially doctors in the rural areas, and uh, build more hospitals to uh, to address the uh, lack of uh, health facilities here in the country. But uh, year after. Uh, the, the Marcos administration do nothing about these promises. Well, in fact, the, the benefits of the health workers, uh, uh, the, the benefits of the health workers delayed, uh, in his watch. So, uh, and, um, the, the facility, uh, we, we don't see any, any moves by the government to improve the healthcare system here in the country. Yeah, I'd like to also add that because hunger and malnutrition has a big impact on people's health, um, the health conditions of people have really deteriorated because of the increasing number of people who are hungry, hungry and malnourished. This is because the wages have not really been increased. They increase it to 40 pesos. What's that? It doesn't even it doesn't even allow you to buy a kilo of rice because a kilo of good rice is already 50 pesos. They will only increase 40 pesos per day. Uh, what kind of uh, addition is that to the budget? So uh, many people are really going hungry and because of hunger, many people are malnourished and because of malnutrition, many people are getting Ill. Ill. Even the ordinary uh, infectious diseases, which is viral, it ends up into a bacterial infection that needs antibiotics, but the medicines continue to increase in price. And Marcos was saying that he will decrease the price of uh, medicines, but uh, the studies have shown that the prices of medicines continue to increase also because we do not have our own drug industry. We have been dependent on imported medicines for a long time. So if the cost of medicines is expensive, um, in importation, then it will really add up to the cost. But why is it also like that? It's because the drug industry is dominated by foreign multinationals, drug, multinational drug companies. And even the local drug companies, they have also pegged their medicines at an expensive rate. And as Albert was saying, uh, the president promised better facilities, but it's not happening. Many of the hospitals, especially in rural communities, are there, but they are not equipped with proper facilities, nor do they have enough human resources. Many of the nurses are leaving the country because the pay outside of the country is much higher than what they get from here. Although the government is saying, oh no, because we have increased the salaries in the salary standardization law, but it, there are so many requirements for nurses to get into the government hospitals. So many of them would just rather go abroad. And also because of the understaffing, nurses are really overworked. And um, many of them also get sick. So they said rather than being overworked and underpaid in this country, they might as well leave. And that's a big problem. We have a lack of nurses and a lack of doctors. The, first, the hospital, Plus, uh, building is there, but there are no personnel, there are no equipment. And so the poor people, they're the ones suffering. In the end, when they're already seriously ill, they go to private hospitals. And private hospitals are also very expensive. And, uh, and um, the Marcos government did not also appoint a, sec a real Secretary of Health. We have an OIC, which was doing her work, but she wasn't really appointed as Secretary of Health. So in terms of policy directions, um, she was doing her job, but the government was not really giving a lot of emphasis. Budgets have been cut, and even the Philippine General Hospital, which is the premier hospital, tertiary hospital in the country, its budget was also cut. So how can you improve your services if you do not have the budgets? So um, contractualization among workers continue, especially in the private hospitals. 
they employ the nurses for only a certain period of time because they don't want to make them permanent because that would mean more benefits for them. So every six months, you have a change of uh, nurses and even not just the nurses, the nursing attendants, the institutional workers, they have been privatized to uh, private con uh, contractual agencies. So the hospitals are now being supported by workers who have not really been trained as hospital workers. So uh, these are the things that we have been looking for in terms of support from the Marcos government vis-a-vis -vis the health facilities, the health system development. So it's only now that we have a Secretary of Health that has been assigned. But unfortunately, we also do not see him addressing the public health system. He comes, although he comes from the government hospital, but his trust has been very hospital centric. So public health, community-based healthcare, has really been neglected under the Marcos government. Uh, back to the issue of uh, financing of health services. Um, the government passed the universal health care law, but it's actually, as even WHO, it's not really addressing universal health care, more of universal health coverage. And the uh, a uh, basis for financing will be the use of the Philippine health insurance. And we know for the experience we've had in the past, PhilHealth has been a um, venue for corruption because all the people who are paying their health insurance dues, the money goes to PhilHealth. And so it's a very big uh, source of uh, funds now, but it's only paying off a little of what needs to be paid for the indigents, although they're saying that the indigents can avail of all their health expenses for free, but using the field health funds, but we know that there's still a lot of out-of-pocket expense uh, from indigent people because field health has designated only a specific number of uh, illnesses that then can be covered by field health. So if you go to a health center and because of the low budget, medicines are not available or even laboratory exams are not available for free, you still have to go to a private entity for to avail of this. And PhilHealth only reimburses if you are in, an inpatient. They have developed outpatient packages for reimbursement, but it's only really limited. So we still have a big issue of whether our health system should be funds financed by taxes or should it be financed by insurance? And we have been advocating that the public health system has to be strengthened by the taxes of the people, that regardless of whether you have paid your insurance dues or not, when you go to a public health facility, you should be able to get the correct diagnosis, the correct treatment or whatever laboratories you may need you should be able to get them for free because you have been paying your taxes and the taxes are supposed to be used to uh, benefit you for whatever social needs you may have. So uh, we still have this. And recently the Office of the President came out with a recommendation that they transfer the field health from the Department of Health to the Office of the President. So it's a big question, why? Why will the Office of the President be interested in PhilHealth? When PhilHealth, even under the Department of Health, is having a lot of problems in terms of policies, what more if it's transferred to the Office of the President? So we see a lot of questions here. Is it because it has a lot of money and they're interested in it? Again, a question of possible graft and corruption issues. But still, the bottom line is, is it benefiting the people? So it's still, we're advocating for tax-based uh, funding for our public health system, not a health insurance scheme.